Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're going to take a look at the monastery texts in Age of Empires 2 and how I would rank each text's importance. The ranking part is admittedly subjective, but I think is key, as it pushes the discussion away from just a factual description of what each tech does, or situations it can come in handy, and more instead toward how often those situations actually arise, and whether the price of the tech gives it a reasonable chance of paying off. Of course, a lot of this is going to be my opinion, informed by my own experience and preferences, but I'll try to lay out a case for each one. If you disagree and think I'm overrating or underrating a certain tech, that's probably to be expected. As it turns out, there are 10 technologies at the monastery, so it sets us up nicely for a classic top 10 list, going from least to most important. Starting off at number 10, we have Herbal Medicine, which for 200 gold gives your garrisoned units 6 times the usual healing rate. For a town center or castle, that means up to 36 and 72 HP per minute respectively. Now a while back, they tried buffing the healing rate and almost cut its cost in half, but I still think the nature of the tech makes it situational, and also funny enough for a monastery tech has nothing to do with monks, making it feel like it should be a tech at the castle if anything. Now I've tried to put this in a good light before, and for example found that when healing 20 elite mangadai in a castle with herbal medicine, during the minute or so they're healing, the castle is generating the same value as temporarily adding about 100 extra villagers to your economy, if we compare it to just replacing those units from scratch. Cavalry archers and their variations are probably one of the best use cases here, given they're quite expensive and also heal up quickly. Now while that math checks out in a vacuum and sounds great on paper, Generally, I think you're just better off putting that 200 gold toward a few extra monks, who can heal but also throw in conversions and grab relics. Faster garrison healing is just pretty situational, and involves tying down your units while actually paying attention to when they're fully healed, so they aren't just sitting in there. Next up at number 9 we have Faith, which for 750 food and 1000 gold raises the minimum, maximum, and also the average conversion time for your units. Of course, sometimes that won't make a difference, and you can always get a bit unlucky, but generally speaking this tech does help quite a bit. For example, in 100 trials of a monk converting a knight at close range, without faith the monks have a little over a 50% success rate, so basically a coin flip, slightly favoring the monk. If we give the knights faith though, the monk's success rate at close range drops to just 10%, so practically speaking the knights will basically always win. Likewise, if they start converting a knight at their maximum range of 9, without faith the monks succeed in their conversion functionally every time. Repeating the experiment but giving the knights faith though, that success rate drops to 40%, so there's really no question, at close or even long range, faith has a very noticeable impact. The problem here mostly comes down to cost, and whether it'll actually swing enough conversions the other way to justify getting this instead of an extra 1700 resources worth of units. It's why despite almost every sieve having access to faith, it's just not that common of a tech to see people research. In addition to just being one of the most expensive techs in the game, another factor working against it is you can't pick it up until you're in Imperial Age. Generally, monks are at their most dangerous in small numbers, as players have a better chance of micring them to their full potential. And there's no way around it, armies are just naturally smaller in Castle Age. If this tech was significantly cheaper and available in Castle Age, I think you'd see a lot more Night Rushes being combined with this. For example, the Tudens team bonus gives about half the effect of Faith, but since it's free and comes earlier, it's widely considered quite strong, especially for Knights. Also, in the late game, making Hazar, Eagle Warriors, or ranged units also just feels like an easier way to deal with monks, which probably aren't going to be perfectly microed at that point anyway. Moving on to number 8, we have the related tech Heresy, which costs 1000 gold and makes any of your converted units die. Now I only place this one step further up the list, and yet I'd say this tech is much more useful than Faith, partly because it's available in Castle Age, so you're able to use it much earlier. Of course the main selling feature of this tech is that it removes the damage that can be done by your unit after it's converted, which in the case of a Mangano or Onager can be pretty substantial. On the flip side though, the problem is a lot of civs that would really benefit from heresy don't get it for game balance reasons, with battle and war elephants being the obvious examples, and Malay is the one exception to have battle elephants and this tech. Mostly this ends up being used by paladin civs, and the vast majority of paladin civs have it, though even then you need to save 14 paladins in order to deny your opponent more gold worth of units than the tech cost in the first place. Similar to Faith, it seems intentionally priced to make it pretty situational when you're just up against a ton of enemy monks and are willing to pay almost anything to try to shut them down. 
Next up, at number 7, we have Atonement, which for 325 gold allows you to convert enemy monks. The main knock against this tech is that it requires the very specific matchup of monks against monks, so it doesn't come up as often as other situations. Though, on the other hand, if you don't have this and someone else making monks does, they can essentially stop your monk push dead in its tracks. That's a realistic situation if you're Incas or Khmer who have otherwise decent monk and siege play, but are lacking this tech. That said, while it's technically the fourth most expensive monastery tech, I don't necessarily hold that against it, as if you can convert even two enemy monks, you've taken 200 gold from your opponent and added 200 gold of value to your side, so in the right situation it can actually have a very fast payback. Consider a converted monk also keeps its previous faith level, so in some cases you can use it immediately after a conversion and steal another monk or unit right away. The fact a monk strategy can end up entirely depending on having this tech is an argument for moving it higher, but like I said, if your opponent doesn't go for monks, then it's a useless tech. The fact it's either critically important or completely useless makes it by definition situational and not top 5 material. Moving on to number 6, we have Fervor, which for 140 gold lets your monks move 15% faster. This one I think needs some justification, as I know some people would probably put it well into the top 5. On paper, the argument goes that it'll help you secure relics because you'd beat out other monks who are racing you for them, but really in practice we're probably talking about just a couple of seconds difference. I'm not saying that doesn't happen ever, but I would question how many extra relics it's really going to translate into, versus making an additional monk with the same research time and a similar cost. Most of the time it seems better to just make multiple monks than to make one and speed it up by 15%. Likewise, in a monk in siege push, a bit more speed just isn't that critical with a ranged unit like a monk that does all of its actions while standing in one place. Mangonels are probably the best example of how it can help, as monks are barely faster than a mangonel without this tech and become, to my eyes at least, noticeably faster with fervor. The biggest exception here is for the bohemians, as it also affects their villagers, making it a great eco upgrade on top of its benefit for monks. Aztecs, of course, also get plus 5 HP per monastery tech, and when you add that effect on top for 140 gold, it seems like a much better deal. If you still don't agree with it being so low on my list, consider the fact that in Age of Conquerors, for over 10 years this bonus was bugged, working only when monks were carrying relics, and not when they did anything else, yet that was a pretty obscure trivia fact at the time. The fact that most people didn't even notice this tech did almost nothing for 10 years I think speaks to how little of Monk's effectiveness relies on speed. But now let's get into what I consider the more important top 5. Next we have Illumination, which at 120 gold lets monks and missionaries recharge about twice as fast after a successful conversion. The benefit here is obvious, that you get conversions significantly more often with the same number of monks. The tricky part is that it can sometimes be hard to optimize if you have too many units, as you're probably not able to redirect them all at the exact second they recharge. I also think this would be a lot more useful in Castle Age, but is unfortunately only available in Imperial. If some future civilization got Imperial Monk techs in Age Early, in the same way you have Burgundians getting some techs early, I suspect Illumination would be a lot more useful and a higher priority than probably most of the Castle Age techs. Even still, despite being a late contributor, the fact it only costs 120 gold gives it insane value if you're working with a lot of monks and doing a lot of conversions, so in that case this would definitely be a tech worth considering. But speaking of large groups of monks, at number 4 we have Theocracy, which for 200 gold means that in a group conversion only one monk has to recharge. This gives you the upside of getting more monks involved to speed up an important conversion, but afterward all except one are ready to immediately start again. Likewise, one common trick to microwing monks is to have a group try to convert a unit and then deselect them one at a time, giving the remaining group a new target. This lets each monk hold on to the conversion work they've already done as you switch targets, speeding up all of those late conversions. The problem with this trick is if you're kind of slow or get a quick conversion without this tech, you lose all of your monks faith, basically leaving them dead in the water for the next 60 seconds. With this tech, you greatly reduce that concern, as at most you lose faith on one monk in the group that you still have selected. Alternately, this opens a completely new trick, and with a group of monks having theocracy, you can just shift Q enemy targets, and the group will move through them one at a time in a series, with only a single monk dropping out after each conversion. 
Whatever your preferred method, on a practical level, this is just a very useful tech in Imperial Age, especially if you're using one of the more advanced tricks or dealing with more than a handful of monks. Next up, entering the top three, we have the Castle Age Tech Sanctity, which costs 120 gold and increases monk HP by 50% from 30 to 45. Even if it turns one dead monk into a successful conversion, you just saved a 100 gold unit, gained an enemy unit worth some value, and also deprive your opponent of anything else they could have done with that unit. So even just a single success that otherwise wouldn't have happened completely justifies this tech. In addition to very likely repaying quickly, it's available in Castle Age, where it even prevents Meganels from taking out your monks in one shot. That's made even more significant by the fact a damaged monk can probably be healed by some friends nearby, so surviving with just a couple of HP can quickly be a brand new full HP unit, or even better, might mean converting that Meganel itself. All in all, it's just a very good tech with a small cost and a lot of upside, so it was an easy decision for top 3. Moving on to number 2, we have block printing, costing 200 gold and adding plus 3 conversion range, or plus 33% to put that in context. I'm completely open to the argument this should be switched with Sanctity as number 2, and definitely considered it, but my reasoning is I'd rather convert a unit before it can reach me than have it reach me and survive 1 or 2 extra hits. The further away you can make your conversions, generally the better. This is an Imperial Age tech though, and I think you have to think of it in that context. Unlike Mangonels in Castle Age, even monks with Sanctity can be taken out in one onager shot, but with plus 3 range have a decent chance of a conversion if there's some traffic between them blocking the onager. I see it as a testament to this technology that when it was given to Chinese for historical reasons, there was an outcry online that this would stop onagers from being a good counter to them, as some players felt it was the only answer to the Chinese late game death ball. Admittedly, block printing does come quite late in the game, but its impact is so important in a few key matchups that I felt it had to be near the top. That leaves us with just one technology left, and at number one, it's Redemption. This is a relatively expensive one at 475 gold, but allows monks to convert siege and buildings, with a few exceptions like castles. While converting buildings is pretty funny, assuming your opponent doesn't just delete them first, it's the siege component here that's critical. It's a game changer against the Manganel line, or to a lesser extent Scorpions, in any Monk or Siege push, and is also needed for those late game Onager and Bombard Cannon conversions. If all you're doing is converting Knights and collecting Relics, it's really not a critical tech, but if you're doing a serious Monk play and don't want to get stopped dead in your tracks by Manganels, you're really going to want Redemption. I'd even go as far as to say a Civ can't really be considered a Monk civilization without it, and you'll notice in my Civ overviews I bring it up more than any other tech when discussing the Monastery. So that's my ranking of the Monastery Techs, though again this has all just been my opinion, and I'm curious how that list would differ from yours. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.